What is poppin' YouTube? Back again with another video. Today we're talking about some players that did not do too hot in week five fantasy football. And if we should be panicking, if we should be selling, and kind of discussing their overall outlook, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're new, and let's go. So the first player we need to talk about today is Derek the King. Henry. Derrick Henry has had an absolutely amazing career. We thought going into this season that Derrick Henry, as long as he was going to be getting the volume, it was going to be fine because as much as we knew that this Tennessee Titans offensive line sucked and that potentially Ryan Tannehill wasn't the long-term answer at quarterback, that it was going to be fine. Then we got word that DeAndre Hopkins was signing with the Tennessee Titans and we thought, okay, their passing attack might be a little bit better than expected. So that's a plus for the Tennessee Titans offense, but that's also a plus for Derrick Henry. We were not that concerned about Tajay Spears being drafted in, Mr. No ACL himself, even though we did know he was exploding because we'd seen these running backs like Hassan Haskins be drafted before and really not get any sort of touches and really not get any sort of work unless Derrick Henry was injured. Well, this season has been completely different where they are taking Derrick Henry off the field pretty consistently. Where if we're looking at the snap counts for week five, we have Derrick Henry with 37 snaps and we have Tajay Spears with 32 snaps. We're talking this last week, it was almost a 50-50 split in the backfield. Now, Derrick Henry did get 12 touches. He did get 15 routes run. But if we look on the other side, Tajay Spears had seven carries and had 20 routes run in his five targets. And so for me, it's really a split backfield here for Derrick Henry, Tajay Spears, reminding me a little bit of Zeke Elliott, Tony Pollard of last season. And while I think Derrick Henry still has that touchdown upside, he's still getting carries. He's just not getting the amount of carries that we're used to seeing out of Derrick Henry. And so it's getting me a little bit concerned. So right now, the panic meter is about a solid six out of 10 for my man, Derrick Henry. So if you're able to get off Derrick Henry, maybe you have someone in your league that absolutely loves running backs. And if you have Derrick Henry in a ton of depth, I potentially would be looking to trade out from Derrick Henry, maybe get another running back, maybe get an upgrade at running back, because I'm just a little bit concerned about Derrick Henry going forward, but you do you. You do you. Derrick Henry is the king. I have him on a bunch of teams. I'm probably going to hold some. I'm going to sell some shares. Derrick Henry is someone that I'm a little bit panicked about after week five fantasy football. My second player that I'm a little bit panicked about in fantasy football is Joe Mixon. We've had Joe Mixon ranked as a top 12 running back the last few weeks. And while you look at Joe Mixon, I mean, this last week, 63 snaps, 32 routes run, four targets, and he had 26 carries. With all of those touches that Joe Mixon ended up having, he only had 13.4 fantasy points, which just is not good at all right now for Joe Mixon. I mean, on the season, he's RB16. If we're looking 10.3 fantasy points in PPR in week one, 13.5 in week two, 14 in week three, 8.6 in week four, and then 13.4 in week five. And so, I mean, if you like 13 fantasy points a game, that's fine. I just think the upside that we thought Joe Mixon might have with the touchdowns, with his offense being uber efficient, has just not been there. So I personally think it is a little bit time to panic on Joe Mixon. So if I can sell him right now, while people still might think that the volume's there, we've seen some decent production, that he might be able to get that upside taken care of. I would trade now. I think that's something that I would be looking to do. It's just it's just sad that Joe Mixon hasn't been able to be the type of running back that we were hoping and expecting him to be when you were drafting him, Joe Mixon, in the back end of the third round, early fourth round of your fantasy football drafts. And I think we're just going to continue on this running back trend. Our next guy we need to be concerned about is Miles Sanders. We talked about Chuba Hubbard yesterday's video as a great waiver wire target this week because Chuba Hubbard's playing just better than Miles Sanders. I mean, it's pretty clear at this point that Miles Sanders, I'm glad he got the contract. I'm glad he got paid. But there's a lot of questions that we have about Miles. Sanders. 11.8 phase points in week one was great, but then we look at the weeks after that 7.7, 17.2, 6.2, 1.2 this last week. And while the 11.8 and the 17.2 fantasy points does great things for you when that happens, the 1.2, the 6.2, the 7.7, that absolutely kills you in your RB2 spot. It just seems to me that I would likely try to get out Miles Sanders right now. If I can flip Miles Sanders for Alvin Kamara, if I can flip him for Ramondre Stevenson, maybe add a piece, I'd be even willing to flip Miles Sanders right now for Jameer Gibbs. I know Jameer Gibbs is out with an injury. David Montgomery is absolutely performing great. But those are some things that I'm looking to do with Miles Sanders because I think in a panic meter, if I had to rank that this week, I would put Miles Sanders at a 7 out of 10. I'm pretty scared for Miles Sanders rest of the season. Time to panic with Miles Sanders if you have him. Look to trade my man. My next topic of discussion is pretty much any Patriots weapon that you have. Hunter Henry, Ramondre Stevenson, I really have only been the two type of fantasy football assets that have been any type of value this season. But I'm definitely panicking for Ramondre Stevenson. So Ramondre Stevenson, this whole thing, 7 out of 10 would be my panic level. Mac Jones just doesn't look good. Bill Belichick's 
like won't really demote him to second string, won't really put in Bailey Zappi. I'm just not sure that Bailey Zappi is any better, even though Bailey Zappi did look better last season in the extended games that he did play. If I have any of these Patriots options, I'm definitely panicking, looking to sell, looking to maybe address it on the waiver wire. But I'm Ramondre, Hunter Henry, definitely scared for both of these guys. My next team, of course, is going to be the Denver Broncos. Panic level for Jerry Judy for Quilton Sutton is definitely a six out of 10. Jerry Judy, is Jerry Judy just a jag? I think that's the question that I've been asking myself all week, trying to figure out where I got wrong with Jerry Judy this season. Not that we had Jerry Judy super, super high. We did have Jerry Judy as someone that we didn't exactly like his draft value. We then had some guests on the channel that then were able to debate that, prove that based on last season, if we look at week 12, the end of the season, Jerry Judy was a top six wide receiver on a points per game basis. Now, where is that top six points per game basis that we're seeing this season? It's been nowhere to be seen. And so Jerry Judy's definitely someone that I'm panicking on. I mean, Cortland Sutton, I'm also panicking on. I think Jaleel McLaughlin seems to be the only guy in this Denver Broncos offense that has any sort of fantasy football value on a week-to-week -week basis. So I'm definitely panicking on the Denver Broncos offense. My next guy that I'm panicking on is Jalen Waddle. We drafted Jalen Waddle in the middle of the second. And while Jalen Waddle, he's dealt with the injury, 11.8 fantasy points, 12.4 fantasy points, then was out week three, 8.6, and then 14.5. So he actually had his best day this last week. I'm still, there's just a part of me that still feels like, where is this elite level upside that we thought Jalen Waddle would have? I mean, we've seen it from Tyreek Hill. We've seen it from the running backs. And now they just add Chase Claypool as a tight end. It's getting me a a little bit nervous about, of course, Jalen Waddle's playing in the most explosive offense in the NFL. So he's going to get his due at some time. But depending on the situation, I think we could debate that Jalen Waddle might be a sell. My panic meter for Jalen Waddle is probably a five out of 10. So it's not as high as some of these other situations, but I'm definitely a little bit concerned about Jalen Waddle going forward. And so depending on what you have, what you potentially could get done, Jalen Waddle is someone that I am a little bit concerned about. So these are some guys that I'm starting to panic on. But like I said, you got to have a level head in fantasy football. So just because you're panicking and maybe you can go get a deal done, don't sell super, super low. If your roster is doing really bad, you might need to make some changes. So ask me any start state question down below. Ask me any trade question down below. We're here to help you win some fantasy football championships this year. Thank you guys so much for all the love that you've been sharing lately, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.